Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Google Map block, one of the blocks from our key blocks for Gutenberg Premium plugin. This block is here to help you add a Google Map anywhere on your site with more ease than ever before. It offers extremely user-friendly options, so there's absolutely no need for you to know how to create iframe links, embed maps, or use shortcodes. This block tackles it all for you. However, it should be noted that this block works with the Google Maps service, and you require an API key from them before you can display a map on your site. Once you have that ready, you will be able to use this widget to add a map anywhere on any of your site pages. So, we've seen a few examples of what that can look like. Now let's see what you need to know to use the Google Map block. The first thing you should do is sort out the API key. You can do that on the integration page. Let me show you what that is. I have it open here. The integration page is where you add the API key for Google Maps as it is a third-party service that you want to integrate with your site. You can find this page if you go to your dashboard menu, open key blocks for Gutenberg, and then click on the integration page sub-option. Then simply paste the API key you get from Google Maps in here and hit save. After that, you're free to get back to your page and carry on making your site. So, on to the page where I'll be adding my map block. You can access all your blocks from here. There is a search function, but you can also scroll down and simply browse through the selection. You'll have all your Gutenberg blocks here, as well as any others you may have installed, such as the key blocks for Gutenberg. The key blocks are easily recognizable by their reddish-pink icon color. At the top, you'll see the premium blocks, and under them you'll find the free ones. So you can select the block you want from here and drag it over to the page. Alternatively, let me close this, you can add a block from the page. Simply click here. There's a search function here as well. You can use it if your block isn't already shown below, but as mine is, I'll just click on it to select. And there, this is what the Google Map block looks like by default. It has the regular Google Maps styling and this yellowish orange bin. When you want to start customizing it, you'll start naturally from the Content tab. And the topmost option here is the one which lets you pick your pin icon. We recommend using the PNG image format to keep the pin looking its best on a map. I'll use an image that I previously added to my media library. There it is. OK. Select. And before it can appear on the page, we need to click on this Update Map button. In fact, any change you make should be accompanied by a click on the Update Map button. And here's my new pin now. It's white, which makes it a bit hard to spot, but when I change the map style, we'll be able to see it far better. But more on that later. For now, we have the next option in line, and that is the address. We need to click on Item 1 to open the Address Input field. Then simply type over the placeholder location. Give me a sec. There. Now you can have more than one location pin on your map. Just click on this Add Item button and it will create additional input fields so you can add another address. And you can keep adding items in order to show all the locations you need. However, I'll just be using one for this tutorial. So I can click on Update Map to show you the new location. There we go. Below this, we have one more option. It's in the Advanced section and it's for additional CSS classes. This option is used to create a specific class for an element, and then you can use that class and refer to your element when creating CSS that would style it. Alright, let's move on to the Style tab. This is where the Google Map block really shines. For starters, here we have the Map Height option. By dragging the slider, we can change the height of our map, or we can type in a value. That's what I'll do and set 585 pixels for my map height. Following that, we have an input field for the map style. And if you look at this note below, you can see that the map style field accepts JSON code generated by the Snazzy Maps site. Snazzy Maps is an online tool that allows you to style a Google map any way you like. I'll leave you a link to it in the description below. And I have it open in this tab, so let me briefly show you what it looks like. Ok, this is its front page, and I'm already logged in. I took the time to style my map ahead of filming, so we don't have to waste time now. But since this is a third-party service, I just want to give you an idea of how it works. It's very intuitive and easy to use. But you can check out the Snazzy Maps help section if you have any difficulties styling your map. 
So, what do you do once you've logged in? You go to create a style. And then you can use the options here on the left to adjust how your map will look. You can choose your colors for the water areas and for the ground areas as well. You can play around with colors and shades. The options are pretty intuitive, so setting what you like is very easy. When you're ready, go to the Apply Style button. This will provide you with additional options on the left, which you can use on top of the ones before. Once you're happy with the resulting map, you can click on this button here to view the code. Here we can see the code you'd need to copy and then add to the widgets map style field. And when you're copying it, make sure to select it all. I prepared my map style ahead of filming and copied its code, so all I have to do now is paste it into this field. There we go. And we can immediately see how this has changed the map's look and made the location pin more noticeable. That's actually the bulk of the work done. Below this, we have some options for making changes to different map features. For example, there's map zoom. This is basically how close up your map will be shown. A smaller number means the map will show a wider overview. It will be zoomed out. Whereas a larger value will create a more close up look, so the map will be more focused. I'll set 13 for my map. There, now we have a relatively close but still broad enough view of the chosen address. One note though on the zoom. This option works only when you have one address. If you enter multiple addresses, the default zoom from Google Maps will be applied instead. This is done so that all the addresses you add can fit within your assigned map dimensions. Okay, that's that. Our next option is Enable Map Dragging. This will allow users to grab and drag the map as a way of navigating across it. It has this drag cursor and clicking on the map allows us to move it. If we turn it off, the cursor becomes different when it's over the map and the map itself is no longer clickable. I think having this is a useful feature, so I'll set it back to yes. Alright. After this, we have the Enable Map Scroll option. It's disabled by default, so when I scroll with my mouse over the map, all I get is the page moving. However, if I switch this to yes, then scrolling up and down will serve to respectively zoom in or zoom out the map view. I'll set this back to no. Next, we have the Enable Map Street View Control. It's enabled by default and it's what provides us with this icon here. If you turn it off, the icon will disappear. I'll keep it enabled for my map. Then there's the Enable Map Type Control. Keeping it enabled allows us to have these two options for map display. If we turn this off, the options will disappear. They're gone now. I'll enable this again. And we have one more option after this. It's the full screen control. That's this on the map. It allows users to display maps so it covers the entire screen. If we turn this off, then the button for full screen will disappear. I'll keep mine on. It can be useful to users. And that's mostly it in terms of the widgets options. We have one remaining tab, Advanced. This is something you get with every single one of the key blocks for Gutenberg. The options here serve to set how an individual block will look and act on the page in terms of, for example, responsiveness, motion effects, and so on. While these options are undoubtedly useful as they can help you adjust the block positioning, background, border, and more, they affect blocks as a whole. They aren't specific to the Google Map block, so we won't be covering them in this tutorial. With that, my work here is done. My map is finished and we covered all you need to know to use this block effectively. The map I made is just one possible way of styling the display, but there are many, many others. You can see some of those back on the page we started from. The examples here are intended to give you an idea of what you can do with this widget and the different options for styling it. You can choose to mirror one of the designs here or to create something completely different. It's all down to your preference and the design and color palette you want for your site. The important thing is that you now know what options you get with the Google Map block and how they work. So you can set up a map on your site in a matter of moments. Finally, we hope you found this tutorial on the Google Map block from the Key Blocks for Gutenberg Premium plugin helpful. If you have any questions after watching this video or comments or suggestions you'd like to make, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thank you for watching!